Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make player vaults. So, player vaults are very cool. It's a little chest geo-wise. Let's say this. And then you can store a various amount of items in it. And you can go explore and store anything you want, really. Now, there's no limit to how many vaults you can put. I put the, my limit to 100. Yeah, it cannot be over 100, so it has to be 100 or under. It cannot be in the negatives, since you don't want a negative player vault. It doesn't really make any sense. So, what you're going to need is you're going to need SKB and Script. Now, these two, the other plugins are not very important. You just really want these two, since you need that for this to work. Once that is done, you're going to want to create a new file with any name you want. And it has to be, the extension has to be SK, otherwise script will not recognize it. And but you can name it whatever you want. For me, I'm going to name it faults. Then you're going to want to open that file. And for me, I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code from Microsoft since it's way easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a command that can be any command with a the first argument as a number. Then you want to set, check the first argument if it's correct, and then we're going to open the vault. So you're going to start by registering your command with the first argument. Then you're going to check if the first argument is superior than zero. And if the first argument is under 99 or equal. So now that it's done, it's going to check if the first argument is superior than zero. So it's not a negative number. And it's also going to check if the first argument is under or equal than 99. So you don't have an insane amount of variables. So then you're going to want to open the chest inventory by using open chest inventory with six rows. And then you can name it whatever you want as long as the first argument is in the name. So I'm going to be naming this vault one. So if this is one, this is going to be the vault one. So I'm going to be doing that. And then you're going to want to put two player. Otherwise, script will not know who to open this to. So then you're going to create a loop like this, and then you're going to want to set the slot of the loop value minus one. Now that is very important, otherwise it's just going to break everything. Of the player's current inventory, important to put current, otherwise it's just going to put the items inside of the player's inventory. And you do not want that. It's not going to put them into the chest. It's going to put them in the inventory. So you're going to set the slot. Player's current inventory. Two. And now you're going to want to set the variable. So for me, I'm going to be using a simple format of data. The player's unique ID. So player's UID. The vaults. The vault number. And the slot, which is going to be loop value. Now, this is what this is going to do is when it's going to loop 54 times. So when you close your inventory, we're going to be doing that later. But when you close your inventory, it's going to save those to these variables. And it's when you open it, it's going to put every slot of the chest inventory to the variables and the items inside of them. So once you're done, now it should work. Now you should be able to open the chest without any problem. Now we still need some functionality, so I'm going to be adding that before testing it. You need to check the inventory upon closing it to save the items inside of the vault. So on inventory close, if the name of the event inventory is, uh, is vault Actually, it's not is, it's contains, since there's going to be a lot of vaults. Now, you're going to want to add the space, because what we're going to do is we're going to take the event inventory name, we're going to remove this, and we're only going to keep the number that we set here. So, now it's just going to check if it's a vault, 
and if it is, you're going to set a temporary variable to the name of the event inventory. Then you're going to replace all of the vault with in the variable, so we only get the vault number. You want to make sure that you put the exact same thing as you put in the beginning. So let's say if you put chest here, you're going to want to put chest here too. And then you're going to want to loop 54 times again. Now it's very similar to this. This is We're going to be using the same variable. But this time it's going to be set the name of the variable to a uh, slot of loop value minus one of the player's current inventory. So this is going to set the variable to the slot of the loop value negative one of the player's current inventory. Now, if you're wondering why we put negative one is because chests are very weird. So I'm going to be showing you right here. So if you have your chest here, this is actually not slot one, it's slot zero. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, twenty-six. So this is why you need to put that there. So once that is done, you can put you can insert the command sk reload and then the name of your file. For me it's gonna be vault and you are to reload it. And I keep making that mistake. You need to replace the first argument with the temporary variable we set. So the issue is that the first argument, there's no argument in the event. So we actually have to replace it since it's the vault number that we set here before. Now that you finish that again, you can reload the same file and you should be good to go. So if I put the command chest and any number, let's say chest one, you're going to see that I have it because I use the same variable as my other, my player vault one. So because I am at the example one was another script and I used the same variable. And since I did not delete the variable, then the, 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 the vault did not clear, so it's just stayed like that. So now if you have your leaves, you can open your, any vault. You can fill it up and then you can reopen it later. And now you have player vaults. Once once you finish the main part of the the player vaults, you can actually customize it. So I rechanged to the script that I made before and it's way cooler because you got sound effects. So let's say I open the vault. Opens the vault and the closing. And just like that, you just have player vaults. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching and goodbye.